And good day, everybody. Uh, hi, I'm Walter, and I'm the Dutch Mentor. And I have today the pleasure of being joined by Amy, uh, who is coming all the way from the southern part of uh, the United States in the nice, warm, hot temperatures while we're still enjoying the nice, cool, fresh air up at the other end. Um, as we had a previous conversation a couple of months ago, I was really uh, felt uplifted in her conversation, her particular story. And I thought it would really be appropriate as we're going to be celebrating the month of June about mental wealth uh, awareness around specifically about males, but it is, of course, for all genders, uh, really, really important because self-awareness about where we are, preventing burnout is a personal responsibility because it can become a showstopper if it is not managed well. So before we get into that particular topic, and I hope that you all hang with us, is that let's uh, give Amy an opportunity to kind of set the stage and tell us a little bit about her background and why she feels so passionate about it. Amy, welcome to uh, our chat about leadership and I look forward to hearing more about you. Yeah, thanks so much, Walter, for having me on. Um, you know, I went through burnout four years ago, you know, thinking that it was the job that was creating burnout. But what I learned in my recovery really was um, how much I had to learn and, and, and recondition and behavior for emotional regulation to get to the root cause of why I kept burning out over different um, different chapters in life. So it is now my life mission to really help uh, professionals, especially high achievers, get out of that grind that we grew up just, you know, we learn achievement for a reason and it and it makes us feel really good but at some point the title the car the paycheck the zip code you live in just doesn't seem so fulfilling and when you get to that point you know it, it's a really a great season to then kind of do some reflective work and leadership growth so i appreciate all the subject matter that you bring here at the podcast Great, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I'm a big on a big time on raising self awareness, right? Really understanding to to where I, I am in today's world and how I'm perceived, because it's really the perception of myself. I need to learn to manage in order to become a highly effective leader. So, from your perspective, from what, both the experiences that you have had as well as people, what are some of the earlier signs and symptoms that you you're heading in the wrong direction? You know, I think the the most glaring one that you really kind of feel is, you know, constant irritability. You might have emotions like anger and things kind of come up. Uh, you might just feel a lack of attention. Uh, the You know, burnout really affects the prefrontal cortex quite a bit where, you know, our cognitive capabilities decline rapidly. Uh, you might start to feel not just brain fog, but you might feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm really like I'm really feeling memory lapse here. Um, true burnout is is not just feeling tired and going on vacation. Burnout is is when you hit that point where it's really hard. You got to peel yourself out of bed. Maybe you're visiting the doctor for different ailments, like you know some sort of chronic pain or home, hormonal imbalances or or many different things. But at the root of it, the burnout is creating those uh, those physical manifestations. Yeah, and you really need to be in tune with that, right? You need to listen, learn to listen to your body, uh, mind, and soul, for that matter, and putting it all together. Uh, you know, all together. And I think it's even more important to listen to the people around you because they uh, often can see the change that has taken place in you before. A good friend of mine, uh, Tammy Alvarez, who has been passionate about, you know, Monday mornings. Right? Do I feel great about getting up on uh, on on Monday morning? There's a great quote the other day is that. You know, is my anxiety getting to level 10 on Sunday afternoon, knowing I have to yeah. go back to work on Monday morning? So what was that like for you or for the clients that you have worked with that once they recognize it, do, they, do you really have to wait until you hit rock bottom? Or do you, you know, what is the right time to kind of like say, hey, listen, enough is enough. I need to do something about this. You shouldn't wait until you hit rock bottom. But what I do see is something usually breaks in someone's life. It's either something in their career, maybe they lost a job, maybe they got fired. For me, it took me to get fired from the top cybersecurity company of the world <laughs> to do something about it. So, you know, people do go through really big life events because we are used to, and those of us who suffer from burnout are used to suppressing emotion. We're used to just keep doing, keep grinding, keep staying busy. We don't, and it's very much a disconnect between mind, body, and just our emotions. And so, um, and so that can happen. Um, so hopefully you're not waiting till that last end. When you start to feel fatigued continuously and you start to feel um, something's not off, your soul is telling you you're not either aligned in what you're doing on the day-to-day -day in your career, or maybe you're not aligned in a relationship 
or just something in your environment is maybe causing you toxic stress. You know, there's good stress, like going to the gym, but then there's that acute and toxic stress, which is like death by a thousand cuts to your energy. So, so you want to try to be aware enough and it's hard depending on the situation. Um, and that's where I see a lot of my clients kind of teetering on that line of, I think I'm going into a big life event here, or I just went through one and now I get it after the fact, you know? And so yeah. it's a tricky, it's a tricky case. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, there's a big difference here between men and women, uh, right? Mm -hmm. And so we all have to battle our own pride and ego. But mm -hmm. I think that men also have to battle macho, right? It's a perception yeah. of exterior that people are, you know, I cannot be vulnerable. I cannot cry. I cannot break down. And so it might be a point of being too late. So two things come to mind is that, A, uh, you know, there's an underlying potential of having a chronic depressive state or a medical condition. But there's also a phenomenon of situational depression. You know, how does it manifest itself uh, when you're talking about people who are near and burnout? Well, you know, depression is that feeling of hopelessness, despair, right? You just don't see a way out. You feel stuck. Um, and, and how that really manifests in burnout, you know, burnout is that chronic stress cycle turning on over and over and over. It's a lot of times starting with maybe anxiety or feelings of overwhelm. And you just go into that cycle where your brain is always looking for third party validation. You're always trying to feel like a sense of belonging and you just don't connect for whatever reason. And so that can be, that can cause depression. Um, and so, you know, if, if you guys are wondering how to get out of that, um, you know, it, it really, it really requires you to do some inner work on growing your self-belief, taking back control in your life. You know, depression can just drain your energy. It can really distract you and keep you down. And so building resiliency through connecting with your emotion and getting out of that third-party validation, which is oftentimes feeling that pride. You know, I was a mm -hmm. four times um, president club award winner, won a BMW, like did all the things in my corporate sales job won all the awards, very masculine driven energy in tech sales. And I can tell you at the end of the day, I didn't feel more fulfilled for a minute. It was a bandaid of feeling great, but then you'd get that, you'd get that high and then you'd get that crash. And so, and so that's where that emotion, emotional dysregulation can happen. And so when we work on our skill set to regulate more, which means you have to learn how to connect to emotion. And if you have grown up in, the, in an environment that just maybe didn't recognize or you weren't able as a child to really feel emotion or express emotion, that's where some of that inner child work and some of that deeper inner transformational work is extremely helpful for you as an adult, which will unlock your ability to create deeper connection, which drives better revenue in your business. So it all yeah. relates back to your performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, so interesting enough that another inhibition uh, of of people is that, well, I'm not as bad off as as he or she is, right? Mm -hmm. And I always relate it back to alcoholism, right? Is that I'm not an alcoholic. I go to go to work. I get up in the morning. Yes, I drink a lot, but I'm not the, like the clochard on the street who's uh, drinking out of a paper bag. That's that's. So there yeah. is a sliding scale of yes. of intensity. That there's a, re a reality, right? It is so. So talking about, about what are the early signs, and we I think we have well covered the, the the later signs when the when you have the physical manifestation too. What are the earlier signs that you're heading in that in that direction that you might need to become aware of and maybe nip it in the butt sooner? Yeah, you might just see your performance kind of lag a little bit. Like maybe you're a high performer and and you're and you're crushing it, and then you're like kind of back off for a couple of months and you like crush it again, you know, or you might like in your day to day, if you go to the gym, you might be, you know, consistent for a little bit and then back off. So it's that inconsistency over time that will just eat at your mind, body and soul and your, in your body, your nervous system will be like, okay, where are we going today? Like, am I, am I, am I moving forward in, in, uh, you know, consistency or am I backing off? Like, are we, are we moving and driving forward or are we mitigating? Are we, are we holding back? Yeah. And I think that too, that, you know, when you get to that particular state that if you have a trust partner or somebody who, who you have a good, strong relationship, they might start asking you questions. Are, are you okay? And it is, I think, really important to start listening to that. Maybe not to the first one, but if you hear the second, third, fourth person saying something similar, that you really have to start paying attention to that. 
Yeah. And also like if you're, if you have family at home, you're the spouse, partner, kids, um, you know, and if they are starting to say, Hey, like I never see you anymore or, Hey, I just feel really disconnected. You know, uh, sometimes we brush that off as achievers. Sometimes we're like, well, that's because I'm busy. Right. But really, really look at that a layer deeper and ask yourself, Hmm, how am I showing up? Maybe I am showing up a little bit differently. So the, the uh, yeah, the, it's, it's so valuable, but learning to listen, raising that self-awareness mm -hmm. is, is much harder to do than than, uh, than people think, right? You really have to be find that yeah. level of connection and, and make yourself vulnerable to it. So somebody gave me a piece of advice many, many years ago. I said, listen, uh, learn to relate, not compare. Right? Because yeah. every single person who might be at or near in burnout or feels depressed or situational depression is very different from each other. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to compare myself to you, I, I might just be fine while I'm really not. So mm -hmm. just learning to, you know, to relate to each other's stories and then, uh, you know, trying to find that recovery. So having set the stage now, right? So clearly you've been there, yeah. you have experiences. I've seen these things, worked on thing, on self-awareness. Where Once people say, listen, I, there, something is not right, right? I don't feel good about getting up on Monday morning. Um, where would you suggest they start in their, their, recover, their path to recovery? You know, the biggest thing that I have all my clients start with is really um, asking themselves, do I have a personal vision right now? Do I know where, what I'm doing? Like, where am I going? Do I have a North Star to guide me? What I normally find is 99% of people who are in that state, and this is my previous state as well, it's like we get wrapped up in life and we get reactive, right? We start having careers, raising families, doing doing life. And before you know it, you're like, wow, I thought I was going to accomplish the thing by, let's just say 40. Huh? Wow. I went off course. How'd that happen? Well, it's because we're not leading with a personal vision. And so I think it's really important when in those moments we have to say, wait a minute, am I anchored to something really solid? And so if I am my boundaries, my values, who I'm spending time with, my everything is aligned to that. That allows us to really lead in a much easier way. And that's where ease and flow comes in. Um, and so that's one question you can just ask yourself today. Gosh, do I, do I know where I'm going? Do I have clarity in that? And if not, then find help, you know, find help from a coach or whoever, a mentor to help, um, really dis under, uh, under, uh, really discover that, you know? Yeah. So interesting enough is that, um, you know, again, women are much better at by reaching out and maybe mm -hmm. going to an external counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist and work, you know, a business. Men are a little bit less like that, but you know we have to overcome, right? We have to make ourselves vulnerable. One of the one of the areas that people really uh, you know think about is benefits at work, right? Often the benefits package, the health insurance uh, package, includes some help from the outside. So, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of resources that should people be looking for other than going onto the internet looking for signs and symptoms? But where can they find help? Well, um, I think, you know, go into your physician if you need to go there and you feel like from a health standpoint, do that. OK. Um, uh, and then there's, you know, there's so many people out there like myself. We all we all have and like yourself, like we have great content out there. We have, you know, YouTube channels and, and what have you to go understand um, where we need to go next. You know, I think for me, getting going into leadership. Um, having a coach myself time and time again helped me really um, spot those blind spots, you know, that were difficult because you don't always see things. Um, you you may just be so used to communicating in a certain way, for an example, that you don't even realize how you're coming across or not coming across, right? You might be holding back in areas. So I think that's important. Um, from a mental health standpoint, um, you know, getting, getting, um, there's just so much information out there uh, yeah. that you can get, you know, so use your discernment, though, use your discernment and make sure that it aligns with your personal values. Yeah. And I think it is a leader's responsibility over top mm -hmm. of that to be in tune with those that they lead. Right. I, I One of my key responsibilities is to love those you lead. But that doesn't mean that you just want to give niceties. It's also about caring for them deeply and seeing if they start changing in the workplace and then mm -hmm. have these types of conversations and provide resources to the people like coaching, mentoring, or going to more to you know, the, the CSW type route in order to be able to, to, to catch it while you can, right? Before, uh, yeah. way before rock bottom is hit. 
So you've talked about the word resilience and growth. Couple these two things together and tell me a little bit about but what your what your mindset or what your philosophy on that is. Yeah, it's really the ability to navigate change and uncertainty with ease, right? And so, you know, when we're in those uncertain times, it's usually feeling stressful. Our our stress responses are up in our bodies. Um, and so being able to navigate and emotionally regulate, um, you know, I use this example with my parent clients all the time, because, uh, you know, if you're a caregiver of any kind of any kind of family member, you're oftentimes underneath stress. And if you're taking care of other people, you've got to keep that you've got to keep that that presence, right? Um, if you're a dad listening to this or, or a leader uh, of your company listening to this, emotional regulation is key. Um, and so, uh, and so that's really important. Excellent. Excellent. So on that note, um, uh, is that awareness, right? Mm -hmm. It's about asking for help or self-recognition or listening to the people around you in order to be able to go forward, making sure that you have that self-check. Do I still dream about things? Mm -hmm. And when you see you falling short on that and then asking, you know, going out to ask for help. So what, what is a good place for them to start? Um, and to say, listen, I, I need some help. But what, what is your suggestion to you, a new potential client or something that you put out there? Where can people start? Well, I think, you know, like I said, you can find your own resource. You can reach out to people like myself. Um, but also don't be afraid to go to your spouse or your boss, you know, the, the safe, trusted relationship, whoever that is in your life, and be vulnerable. You know, I think vulnerability is the key to connection. And sometimes it feels hard. It feels awkward to be really vulnerable and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not feeling like the A player today, like I usually am, you know, and that takes a lot of humility. That takes a lot of courage. Um, and so, you know, reaching out to trusted sources to just have a conversation. And then from there, you can navigate what, you know, modalities that might help you. I can tell you my journey, um, Transformational leadership was important. Uh, so it's combination of leadership, mindset, cognitive therapy to get over some traumas in my life. Um, I, I do a lot of deep trauma work now as a practitioner because I think a lot of people um, need that work right now in this world that we live in. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. And, and also somatic work feeling comfortable in your body and learning different modalities, different little uh, things you can do with your breath and or, you know, little movements in your in your hands and your feet to help you feel more grounded when you're in those moments of high stress. And this works very well for people in the C-level, business leaders, people that are just doing really big things in life, but need to learn self-grounding tools to help them get to the next level and unlock. Yeah. So I reframed that question a bit of ease because now if you flip it as the leader, how can I approach somebody who is who I see is reach, you know getting into that phase of burnout or a low performance? Because yeah. you know, on the end of the day, it's behavioral capacity of the leader to have uh, ability yeah. to have these types of conversations without mm -hmm. stepping on somebody's soul. So how, yeah. how do you suggest doing that? Yeah, I again, vulnerability is key, right? So being vulnerable with them, having co connected conversations. Being authentic and getting to know your people, showing that you're human and that you actually care. So that's where the empathetic, empathetic leadership approach is really impactful because if we show that to people we work with, people that report to us, our client base, um, we just build deeper connection. People will start to trust you and see you as a safe source. And over time, it probably it may not happen the first conversation. But over time, it will um, foster this culture that just blooms because people feel like, oh, well, they understand I have work and life and now we all have to integrate it. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Yeah, I think it is just overcoming a few. A lot of procrastination goes into this conversation. Once they have had those conversations, like, oh, my God, I should have had this a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. So as a leader of an organization, you know, a small or large team, and does make a difference or even leader of myself is that. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to get to the point of burnout. We don't even, you know, mitigation is always a, a, the best medicine. So what is something as a leader that I can do to, on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis to stay off burnout and, and to raise awareness and to, uh, you know, maybe put some exercises into play uh, that, yeah. that keeps people motivated? 
Well, first of all, you have to be in that place where, where you feel things are smooth, right? With your energy. And so I always recommend people doing three different kinds of breaks a day, at least you should actually do more, but at the bare minimum, you should do an emotional, a physical and a spiritual break every day. It doesn't have to be for a long time, even just for a few minutes each time, but connecting in with emotion. Like I, in fact, I have a great, um, I have a great, uh, worksheet that I can give you guys too on just journaling about the day previously, like recognizing how much progress you're actually making. A lot of times we just, just start grinding and doing the whole, you know, grit thing in America, especially. And so we miss actually the fact that we're making huge leaps and bounds and making courageous decisions and moving things forward in our life. And we go into self-criticism. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to avoid that. Right. So, so just taking those few minutes to really journal about that or, leaving yourself a voice note. I, I love using an, uh, an app called Owler.ai. I transcribe stuff. All, it transcribes my messages and I talk to myself on it. It's great. <laughs> mm. um, and it's an easy way to just go back and look, okay, am I really, am I really giving myself credit here? Then uh, physical, obviously working out, going outside, et cetera. Uh, and then spiritual, whatever you align with that's greater than yourself, you know, connecting into that purpose and that, and that, you know, greater, um, purpose that you have in your life. Yeah, great work. And you say, I, I encourage you to do it's the mini timeouts, right? Uh, two mm-hmm. to three minutes uh, that you need to have an ability to pull back from the work you're doing to kind of reset, rebalance, uh, and move forward. So, uh, great conversation, Amy. I, so, um, where can people find you? Yeah, you can look me up on my website, which is Amy Lee, L E I G H, looper.com. Excellent. And uh, any closing uh, messages for anybody who's watching this on how to recognize and how to get started? Yeah, you know, I think you guys, if you if you take away anything today is if you feel fear, and we all feel it in our body at some point during the day, you fear something, just remember the minute you can transfer, you can transform within a second. And you just need to step out of fear and back into courageous action or choice courageous conversation, just choose courage and it will transform the rest of your day. Excellent. Amy, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me on uh, our talk today at thedutchmentor.com. You can find it on our uh, on my website and hopefully lots of people will get to see it and take it to heart. Uh, as always, you will be able to see it on LinkedIn as well. Uh, let's continue this conversation, especially in the month of June, where we want to raise awareness around mental health. It is a major factor in life uh, and it's still one of those areas people shy away from. And we should do ourselves all a favor by being a little bit more open, a little bit more vulnerable, and it is okay to ask for help. Amy, have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll talk soon again. Thanks so much. Thank you.